Hi angels, I hope you're still with me. Now I want to talk about the CSS box model. Um, one thing you should put in mind is that everything in your HTML is a box. Everything is a box. At least to start with, everything is a box. Everything is every element, every tag you have used so far is a box. Now I got this, um, I went to W3 schools so that I could better explain the box model. Now you have your content inside, so this is your P tag, your whatever tag it is that you're using, maybe H1. Then as you can see, it's kind of like a box. Now you have your padding, which is around it, which is your padding is like the element itself, like the space inside the element. So let's just so let's imagine um, your p tags to be like a house. Or oh, yes, so let's imagine it to be like a normal box, even like a normal box that you you work in. So now, if imagine you kept a toy inside that box. Now, if you imagine you kept a toy inside that box. The space between the toy in the box and the box itself, that is padding. So imagine content as the toy, then padding as the space between the content itself, which is the toy inside, and then the space inside. So the space inside and the box itself, the carton. When I mean the box, I mean a carton, like the carton. Yes. Then we have border. So imagine border as the carton itself. Just imagine the border as the carton itself. What makes up the carton or what makes up the box, the carton itself. It could be whether it's wood, it could be wood, it could be carton, it could be paper, it could be anything. Just imagine the border to be that um, material. It could, and it, the box could be really thick the material could be really thick or it could be really thin the material could be really thick or it could be really thin then you imagine margin so if you want to think about margin margin is the distance between one box and another box so that's how you should imagine the css box model that's how you should imagine your elements okay so let's try to do that let's just see how it is in code form to explain so let's just jump into the code and explain and properly put this into like you know so you could type it and experiment with it now i have here a simple p tag which has a content inside and we're going to style it so the first thing we're going to do is we'll just give it a background color now i want you to bear in mind that um Tags like the P tag are blocked elements. They are elements that are blocked and they are elements that are inline. And then this is a blocked element. So when you give it a background color, whenever you put it, you can see that elements like this stack on each other. So let's just give it a red first. And because it's a blocked element, it spans across the entire page. So nothing else will be beside it. Now you can see we have a background color and let's remove all the padding. Let's say padding, uh, if there is one padding top zero, let's see what that looks like. Okay, there isn't any padding on it. So now let's give it a padding. So, and so padding top will say, um, let's say 20 pixels. So now you can see that there is a space in the box itself and the content inside. Now, if we go down, if we say padding bottom and we say 20 pixels, same thing. And 
if you could also apply it to both left and right but the point i'm trying to drive out is that there is a space between this and the edge of the box so next let's just put a border so we see border let's just say border sorry border um just about the color let's start with the color first we we'll say black so that we could have a nice contrast there then bother with we we'll say one pixels butter style then we'll say solid so if we save and refresh you can see there is a one pixel border around it yeah, shortcuts for both party, margin, and border, but I'll get to that pretty soon. So now you could see, like, there's a padding, and we can see what the border looks like. If we give the border five pixels, you can see it has, inc it has increased. Now, let's think, if we want to imagine what content would look like, I'm uh, sorry, if you want to imagine what a margin would look like, um, let's first give this margin bottom zero pixels first, and then we will duplicate this and save and see. Okay, so let's also give both of them a margin top zero. And okay. So now, because both of them don't have any margin around it, they are squashed on each other. So the reason why I did this was because by default, most elements come with its own padding and margin. Most elements come with its own padding and margin. So if we remove this, there is a default margin that is already on this particular element, this P tag that we are seeing. But if we remove it, you can see that they are now squashed on each other. So obviously, if we say like margin bottom five pixels or two pixels, now we will be able to see that there is a space between this element and this element and just like I just I said earlier it is the space between a particular box and another box so that's as you can see that's what it looks like here so that's the whole idea of the let's increase this a bit so that it's much more obvious so that's the idea of the, the box model it's saying that every con every element can have a padding, can have a border, or every element has a padding, a border, and a margin. And you can increase it or totally remove it by saying zero pixels. So that's the whole idea of the box model. I hope you're able to understand. I hope you understood it. And next we'll talk about using an external style sheet. See you in that one. Let's talk about multiple style sheets. Let's first talk about um, external style sheets. And, and let me just refresh this so there's nothing there. So let's talk about an external style sheet. For our external style sheet, we are going to create a file. We're going to call this styles.css. You could call it anything you want, but let's just call it styles.css. So usually, whenever I want to test if um my style is working i just do body then say background color then let's choose aqua and save then in back to the box that hit the mail, i go and i say um link it's a self-closing tag then i say rel which stands for relationship so um can see there are different ones. What we want to focus on is style sheet. Then I want to use href. Href would mean the file I want to bring into this particular HTML document. And that would be styles.css. And if I save that and I refresh, you can see everything has that aqua background. So it's coming from 
outside. So that's how we make use of an external style sheet. You can now decide that from there to start styling things that you want. So for example, this P tag, we're going to say um, background color a pink. And if we save that, so you could see where's this pink background color. And you could do anything you were doing in your internal style sheet, in your ex right into this external style sheet, and it would work the same. However, I would like to point out that based on the rule of specificity, if you have different external style sheets, they would clash. So let's imagine we create another one. Let's just call this another.css. And I'm going to just copy this, the same thing, into this. But then the background color for this should be bisque. And then the background color for this should be bed. Okay, so now we have that. I'm going to bring it well, well, okay, here. And let's just duplicate this. And I'll place it on top. So instead of main, we would have another CSS save. Now if we refresh, it looks like nothing happened. The reason why it looks like nothing happened is because this style sheet came first and then this one came next. And then it looked at it and said, mm, I can see that there are similar style sheets. Remember when we talked about rule of specificity? Yes. And it's saying, okay, which one is more important? It's saying now the algorithm is going to look at it and say, all right, this one came next. This is the this is more important than this particular one. However, if we cut this and we place it here and save, you could see it totally replaced what we had earlier, just by the fact that this style sheet is still there. So this is just trying to show you that if you have multiple style sheets and they have clashing um, styles, which whichever one comes last is going to be the one that will take more that will take more importance. Of course, if you want this other one to take more importance, you could obviously still put your um, you, of course if you put the this importance there, this will still take of course it will. so yeah, that's still there. But the basic principle is that oops, the basic principle is that whichever comes last will be given more importance. So that's one thing I want you to bear in mind about multiple style sheets. I hope you enjoyed that. Next, we are going to talk about positioning in CSS. Positioning in CSS. I have way through, you know, and I'm hoping you enjoyed, you have been enjoying yourself so far. I'm, I'm sure positioning will be a bit interesting. It's about, you know, putting different things at different areas of your documents. Yeah, let's get into it.